Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this final episode of the series, we're going to be talking about concepts. So oftentimes when we're defining something like a function template, we don't intend for it to be used with all possible data types. For example, we may just design this template to be used for different kinds of integral numbers. So maybe 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, and 64-bit integral data types, but not say floating point types or some user-defined structure class. So it'd be really nice if we had a way to express this to, pre to prevent the potential misuse of our template. We don't want someone trying to use uh, or instantiate a version of our template for a type that it wasn't intended to be used for. Now, a way that we have to do this in modern C++ is through concepts. So we can see on the right-hand side of the page, the CPP reference page for the concepts library. And it says that the concepts library provides definitions of fundamental library concepts that can be used to perform compile time validation of template arguments. So it's exactly kind of what we're looking for here. So let's go ahead and see the basics on how we can use these concepts. So we'll go ahead and open up a new example here. We'll just call it concepts.cpp. And inside of here, let's go ahead and include IO string so we can do some printing. And we'll also create a main function here. So let's say we have some fun simple function template here. So here I'll create a, a simple function called print here, and we'll use our abbreviated template syntax. So we'll just pass in some auto value. And let's say we only expect, you know, integral data types for this template. So we'll just say print out using stud out, you know, printing integral value, and then followed by whatever the value is, right? And a new line character. So this simple templated function will use will work perfectly well for um, our different integral data types. So I can just do something like, you know, print, and then I can pass in say an integer number, and I'll get the version of this print function for integers. So I'll go ahead and save this. We'll go ahead and minimize concepts.cpp, and we'll compile it with G++, call our output executable just something like concepts, and we'll set our standard equal to C++20 because we're using that abbreviated template syntax. Okay, we have our executable, and you can see we get our print just fine. Now, the issue here is that we've done nothing really to constrain this templated function here, right? Somebody could come along and try to create an instance of this print function for whatever type they really like. So for example here, someone could come along and create an instance of this function for some double precision number, like 10.352. We haven't done anything to prevent this from happening, right? We just have a templated function up here. So even though we only intended for this to be used, say, with different integral data types, we're accidentally using it here with a type that we didn't expect or intend. So some double precision number. Now, in some cases, this will lead to a compiler error that can be rather long and tricky to figure out, or perhaps even worse, um, it could just lead to some unexpected result at runtime, right? Some strange behavior. So let's go ahead and save this and we can go ahead and compile this concepts.cpp again. And you can see we got this instantiated version of this function for our double precision type, even though we only intended for this to be used with uh, integral data types, right? It says printing integral value here, and then we very clearly have a non-integral data type, right? We have a double precision floating point number. So let's see how we can kind of constrain our template and uh, this parameter value here using something like a concept. So on the right-hand side, you can see we have a number of core language concepts that are all defined in this header concept. And you can see we have some that look like exactly what we're looking for. We have concepts for say integral types, signed integral types, unsigned integral types, floating point types, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and add a concept for say integral types for this print function. So at the very top of my file, I'll go ahead and include this concepts header where these things are defined. And then I'll go ahead and constrain this value to being some std integral type, right? So it has to be something that's integral. And you can see I now start getting a warning or an error right inside of my code. So if I go ahead and go to this print line where we're passing in the double precision number, it now says no matching function call to print double. So let's see what the full compiler error is when you try to compile this. So we'll try to recompile concept C++ um, with this std equals C++20. And you can see we get this, you know, error, no matching function call for print that takes a double precision number. And you can see that, you know, it goes through this process of seeing, oh, there's a candidate, 
but it requires this integral uh, concept here. So if we go down here at the very bottom um, from this concepts file, it says that some expression is integral with our type equal to double evaluated to false, right? So our double uh, type is not an integral data type. So it ended up failing this uh, type substitution here, right? So it just went ahead and said, okay, you don't match the concept. You're using this function template incorrectly. So it kills our compilation here. Great, right? So we had a fairly clear error message saying, you know, why, you know, some type couldn't be used here, right? It failed because we did not, uh, you know, whatever the type we passed in was not of this std integral concept. So if we go ahead and go back and use some other integer here, like 1129, right? We, of course, don't get an error because this is an integral type. Same thing if we did say an unsigned integer here. So we pass, you know, 1129 with this u at the end to specify it's unsigned. Right, all of those things will work just fine, but we had a way to put some guardrails on this function to prevent things that say are not integral data types. Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video, which like I said, is the last one in the series. Um, I'll go ahead and make sure to link um, you know, this page from the concepts library in these different uh, core language concepts below the video. And you can find this and any of my other uh, examples from this series at github.com slash coffee before arch. So they're all under this CPP from scratch repository on this page. Now, this won't be the last, say, video on C++ I'll be making. We'll be starting up some new series soon on both C++ software development. So we'll be looking at things like more advanced C++ usage, um, as well as things like debuggers, compilers, and build systems. And we'll also be having a series more catered towards um, parallel programming topics. So there's a lot more C++ topics uh, uh, to get into. But we'll go ahead and leave this series as is as kind of a checkpoint for an intro series to C++. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.